Welcome to uh, What's Up with the Market. Uh, we are going to have a look at the market status. Haven't done this uh, for about a month, given uh, some other things that have been happening in the business. Uh, and that's really what we are. We're going to do this monthly from now on. And every alternate week, we're going to be doing portfolio considerations. So without much further ado, let's get into it. Just to remind you that none of the analysis that I do here today, which is generic technical analysis, looking at patterns, uh, looking at support and resistance, using a bit of Fibonacci. Uh, that's all generic technical analysis, which is highly subjective and open to opinion. So none of what I do here today is used in Sparsary Investor or Sparsary Trader, which are mechanical systems, and nor is any of this used to make any decisions whatsoever uh, because this is subjective technical analysis, as I said. And what we are, uh, we are objective traders. We use rules and, uh, and such to make decisions. And I don't use any of what I cover here today to make decisions in my, any of my personal portfolios either. I'm 100% mechanical and precisely follow the rules of our systems. And I uh, also got to remind you that everything we cover here today is general investment advice, not specific or personal investment advice. Okay, that said, let's get into it. Looking at the Dow Jones here, first things that come to mind, it's still in this upward channel, this channel that's been going uh, for quite some time. Uh, there it goes back to 2022 and it's in the upper half. So what I typically do is put a median line through the middle and it's in the upper half of this channel and uh, uh, good touch points, early touch points there and hasn't quite touched again, but touch points along the bottom. And just uh, what I do is, is I compare this to look and see where it is. It's at a new all time high still and made higher highs just in recent periods, trading periods, trading sessions, and it's underperforming the S&P 500. And typically that happens when there's a, when risk on is favored compared to risk off. So pay, taking a little bit of risk, certainly not a, 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 a raging bull market at the moment, but certainly is a bull market. And looking at the S&P 500, it is uh, an, uh, a low market risk, if you like. It's an open trade on the cash index. And we can see volatility has been rather high with that drop that we had there, but is dropping. So volatility is dropping. It's now below 1%. Uh, so that's ATR as a percentage of the price of the S&P 500 is how we calculate that. So when it's below 1%, that's the average true range movement uh, is below 1%. That's pretty low volatile and also lends itself to a more bullish environment. And uh, today's session in the U.S., was a green session. There's the bar over there. And this is looking uh, pretty normal uh, for any time of the year, except this is October. And uh, look what happened in September. So that in itself is rather bullish, but October is not yet over. And uh, and let's see what happens. But you know, this doesn't happen every September, October, that, and, and it's known as a typically bearish in, in a couple of months. And uh, what we've got to see is how the markets fare the next three weeks and then come out of this this typically bearish period and run into you know, the Christmas rally that everybody talks about. Doesn't mean because it's positive in September, October that is guaranteed to that we guaranteed to have a, a good strong Christmas rally. Of course, anything can happen and we shouldn't lock on uh, uh, to the future and have any expectations of what may happen in the future. We got to exercise our decision making with a neutral mindset open to both up and down so the the summary at this stage i can tell you is that things are rather are, are better than worse and and we should be in this market we should be 100 percent invested in this market as we are with our with our mechanical systems uh particularly sparser investor and and waiting to see what happens just following those rules and being in if you're not 100 percent invested then you certainly are losing out an opportunity uh because uh, you know the portfolios are making all time the, the u.s portfolios are making new all-time highs as we go both leveraged and unleveraged the real money portfolios that are uh, that are that are traded with and we'll get an update on that in due course okay what we look for in the cumulative new high and new low is divergence so there was an example of divergence there, but it didn't play out to see you know, to, to lead to bear market conditions. Remember, uh, this is a breadth of market indicator and should never be taken on its own. And more uh, more divergences fail than are 
then then are then then are successful in terms of what's what's a successful divergence well if there's divergence the market falls and it kind of follows that divergence what this tells us is there is there uh, is a the market is falling but the and you get divergence the other way around where the market rises and that's the more important one and and the new high uh, low indicator is is uh, is falling uh, but we see it uh, the new 52 week highs have been on a steady trend up over here since uh, November 23 for so for nearly a year and that's led to the positive markets that we've had the other breadth another breadth of market indicators the accumulative advanced decline line and no divergence here either and uh, so nothing really to report back this is another breadth of market indicator the number of stocks above the 150 day simple moving average no divergence here either we can see we've got higher peaks there and higher peaks there as well so I've, I've really only put on these uh, these trend lines here when there is divergence in either direction and known at the moment. So that breadth of market indicator is also positive. Right now onto a sentiment indicator, the uh, US dollar index. And this is showing a little bit of negativity uh, just in the short term. There is the, uh, now I've put a CIROC on this relative strength. So we've got a, this relative strength in the middle, which I've really pulled right down and you can look at it the the, the the moving average the green moving average is declining uh which is positive and uh but that's a ratio so that's the stocks uh to us dollar ratio that's what that relative strength line is and then i've smoothed that by putting a, a, a rather medium term medium to longer term siroc on it and when this is falling that's where the green is over there that's positive so that's showing that it's positive in towards stocks towards uh, stocks compared to what the US dollar is doing. And you've heard me say before that this is a pretty strong sentiment indicator and has a high correlation to what stocks would would uh, would do. So when the US dollar is falling, i.e. getting weaker, that typically means that stocks will rise and vice versa. When the US dollar is getting stronger, typically you'll see stocks fall. And just really zooming in at the end over here, you can see that the US dollar uh, index has started rising and you can see a little bit of a fall in stocks over there. But uh, we need to see a bit more evidence. It's when we get you know, long, strong periods like this over here of the US dollar index rising, you can see stocks uh, fall and it's a pretty high correlation. They do gaps like this is showing that they're moving in the same direction. And of course, anything can happen and it does happen that that does happen from time to time. But, but when uh, the US dollar is moving strongly up, typically you see stocks fall so keep an eye on that one. Uh, we are right down here in inverted commas oversold situation. So you may see, and that's probably why we are starting to see a little bit of strength in US dollars being quite in a downtrend for quite some time. And because we got this on the same scale, the, the relativity of that, if you did it on your own, on just on the US dollar uh, index chart like uh, like there, you'd see the fall has been has been a lot more over that period of time. Okay, uh, right back uh, onto the next chart. Here we're looking at Russell growth versus Russell value. And uh, this red line over here and this declining Siroc and that declining relative strength is telling you that value has been doing better than growth. And of course, what we want for a raging bull market scenario is that is that growth outperforms value. You can just see in the naked eye that value has been doing better than growth. Uh, that's the value down here. Russell value uh, is down the bottom. These are indices, not uh, not um, ETFs. And uh, what we're looking for, it seems to be flattening. And just of late, uh, growth has been doing better than uh, than value just in the short term, but not enough yet to turn the stock indicator up. And you can see the relative strength is starting to gently rise. So it is uh, the indicator from a mechanical perspective is saying you know, that, that it's, it's risk off for this particular indicator, the sentiment indicator. But uh, it looks like it's changing. So keep an eye on that one uh, between these sessions. Uh, what has happened, another sentiment indicator, which is a uh, consumer discretionary v consumer staple. Staples down the bottom here. You can see staples starting to fall off and, uh, and consumer discretionary rising. And we've now seen the relative strength rise, the ratio between the two rising quite strongly. There was the break above the, 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 the downtrending trend line over here. And we've just had that now follow through onto the Ciroc indicator, smooth of the relative strength rising. So that's now risk on uh, that sentiment indicator. So a bit more risk on than risk off at the moment. He has another risk on environment, which is the put call ratio 
on on equities and we're seeing declining we're seeing falling now this is a 250 day uh 252 one year simple moving average 252 trading days in a year uh there is risk on over here it's been declining for some time which means there are more calls and puts and um that is means it's positive and uh, you can see the 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 s p 500 has risen here so that's also saying risk on as well right next to interest rates and here we're seeing 10-year treasuries are starting to rise uh we do have this fall over here the stock indicator and the relative strength has been declining for some time that is bonds to stocks ratio uh there's the stocks down here the s p 500 so this is a bond to stock ratio and uh sorry and that's that's yield the bond yield uh as to stock ratio yields are starting to rise and the the um relative strength line is just starting to tip up over here and it hasn't been enough yet to bring the Ciroc indicator which is a 55 34 to rise uh, and that's just my own those parameters that look back periods is chosen by me by eyeballing there's been no uh there's been no mechanical research into that and the eyeballing is is pretty close um not that you're going to get 100 percent of them being correct so What's this telling us? This is starting to, even though we've got a green line here last, it's starting to look like the yields are rising, which would be typically be, but remember that there's not a high correlation in that one to, to the market falling. Much higher correlation with the US dollar to, for the US dollar as a, a sentiment indicator of potential movement, directional, short-term directional movement. And here we have bonds. This is the 20-year treasury bond. This is not yields as bond prices yields going up bond prices typically fall and what we should do is, is see uh this this ratio of bonds uh bond price to to equities ratio they should go in the same direction so what i've marked here are times and they don't go in the same direction because typically the theory is, is that yields and and stock prices go in opposite directions which means that because the bond and the yield go in opposite directions, that the that equities and bond prices should go in the same direction. Obviously, not anywhere near the same volatility, but they should go in the same direction. And here we've got a, a divergence, uh, so not going in the same direction. So we've got 20-year bonds are falling, which means the yields are also rising. So we looked at the 10-year treasuries in the previous chart, and um, that's saying that 20-year yields will also be rising. So what that should mean is that stocks equity should fall. Um, so which is going to pull which? You've heard me say that before. Are uh, stocks going to give in and fall uh, into, uh, if you like, to go into the same direction as they typically do uh, from time for most of the time in the same direction as bonds and hence obviously in opposite direction to yields. In the previous chart, we saw equities and yields going in the same direction. So either equities are going to pull bonds up and yields down or vice versa and uh, there's lots of discussion about which leads which um but uh, we all have to wait and see on that one you can see the relative strength falling over here between the two right on to uh the fear index this is in pretty normal ranges down down below 20. uh so nothing really to report home there uh onto the nasdaq composite the volatility here, I can see there's the relative strength with between the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. SPX is the S&P 500. And you can see this falling blue line means that the uh, NASDAQ composite is underperforming the S&P 500, which is not, from a sentiment perspective, not a risk on environment. So that this is the, the case for risk off is, is showing through here. Um, in a raging bull market, uh, people will tend to go to the more risky side of the market, which is the, the, the tech stocks, not happening at the moment uh, relative to S&P 500 uh, stocks. So there's a little bit of confusion here, which is what the market spends most of its time in, is, 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 is more, more, more confused, i.e. You know, the, these, these, uh, these contradicting sentiment and breadth of market indicators. You know, it's when it spends far less time where all of the indicators are you know, risk on or risk off and pretty obvious um, so that's why the market is a confusing place for most people and which is why we need you know, rules-based decision-making criteria to make it easier and to try and remove the confusion 
So using this, uh, uh, the relative strength, the, the, the equities to equities ratio of a more risky in, uh, environment of, of the market being the NASDAQ and a less risky being the S&P 500 within the market environment, not relative to the other asset classes, is this is risk off. That's why that red line is there and the Ciroc indicator is falling as is that ratio between the two. So to have a real bullish environment, you'd want to see the, the NASDAQ you know, fall uh, rise above the median line here in this in this channel and get into the upper half and certainly to see these uh, these ratios turning to be more risk on let's go to the nasdaq 100 same same over here as relative to the s p 500 and the ciroc and uh, so this is a risk off environment and you can certainly see we haven't taken out that new high uh, whereas the s p 500 is much closer to its previous peak Looking at the uh, new high, new low, it's 52-week high low. There's no divergence here. This is on the, the NASDAQ 100, rising peaks and rising peaks down there on the accumulative side of things. And the NASDAQ 100 advanced decline line, uh, there's the gray there. There's no, uh, there's no divergence here, a bit flat, uh, but it's, uh, there's no divergence here either. So nothing really to report home on, on that one. Okay, looking at the number of NASDAQ 100 stocks above their simple 150-day moving average, no divergence here either. That's pretty flat. It's almost there. It's almost falling, but you know, not enough to say, hey, this is, uh, this is, this is a, a, a breadth of market indicator that's saying risk off. So nothing to add to either case there. Uh, looking now at the SOX, which is the Philadelphia Semiconductor Sector. So this is a riskier sector of a riskier side of the market being the uh, being the, the, the NASDAQ. Uh, also uh, risk off over here, pretty nowhere near. It's, it's all time high up there. And if we just quickly have a look at a swing chart here, you'll see it's just completed a downswing. This is a three day swing chart, but really some sideways movement over there. So no direction one way or the other on that as a sentiment indicator. But certainly the last, last indicator was saying risk off right turning to the all ordinaries there's the previous all-time high with the, the zone area which is where the black rectangle is there and making new highs made a new high just last week on the 30th of september and a few down days and today is looking a little bit like the start of a green day uh, uh, but uh, th this this is uh, the underperformance here of the s of the of the all ordinaries compared to the s p 500s telling us that's, that is risk on you. You in a in a in a bull market, you'll see the S and P 500 outperforming the all ordinaries, and vice versa in a bear market. So this is this is gentle up. You should be in the market. The Aussie dollar has uh, has risen. It got as high as uh, as 0.694 in a short term uptrend. It's tried to break out of this long term down uh, channel that that has been in over here. It is in the upper half of that and certainly testing it for the case of a stronger Australian dollar against the US is we'd want to see it get above this upper channel line and also break above this resistance zone over here of around about 71. So if it gets above 71, we we'll certainly go higher and could look at uh, you know, sending some more money from AUD into USD. Looking at the Nikkei, it's been a pretty volatile period. In fact, the Nikkei led you know, the rest of the world down and that sharp downturn over there, underperforming the S&P 500 and hanging around this new, this all-time high over here um, and above and below it. It really needs to break. It's been above it there and above it there. It really needs to break above and continue rising at a strong rate. Right, the DAX is, uh, is, is above. There's the previous all-time high. I've put a dotted rectangle over here where it's had one, two, three, four, five touch points, you could say. It's risen above it and uh, come down to test it and looks like it might hold. If, that's, if that previous, if that resistance area over there, uh, which has now become a support zone, holds, that is pretty positive for the DAX and really marking time, matching the S&P 500. The uh, FTSE is, uh, there's the all-time high. It's, it's, it's above the all-time high, which is something to say about the FTSE really being a straggler for many years, maybe even 20 years. Um, so we don't look for too much input and direction from the FTSE. It used to be, prior to a couple of decades ago, it used to be you know, a really major market to look at and not been so for quite some time. 
the Bava Spa for uh, looking at uh, at developing markets. It's above its all time high. Its all time high was higher, so I don't think it's there's the the, the the 2008, but the most the most recent high it has got above it, but not convincingly uh, for developing markets. The one to mention is the Chinese market. So we've got two Chinese indices here. One is the is the large cap 50, and the next one, which is the all, all share Shanghai index, but massive run up. And I'm sure you've all heard about this. Look at that steep rise over there and made another new high. So relative strength against the S&P 500, huge. But this market has a um, uh, has a has a has an inbuilt nature, if you like, of uh, of what I call skyscrapers. So you know, there's a skyscraper. If you go back to, to look at even more data, you can see these skyscrapers happen, and they are followed. Why they're skyscraper? Because these r- massive run ups, you know, are followed by massive run sharp run downs the other side of the skyscraper. Uh, but what we don't know is how long they're going to go for. So that just gives you a bit of relativity on it. Uh, if we make it a, a semi-log chart, uh, you'll see that it's a, you, can get a, you can get a more uh, relevant, uh, relative uh, view of a run-up. Uh, I mean, even that is a, is a, is a big run-down, but we're going to see a run-down at some stage in this, uh, in this market. It's just the nature of it. Um, so if you trade you know, Chinese stocks or whatever ETFs, just beware of, uh, of of a short-term sharp rundown as well. Uh, and this is the Shanghai All Share Index. Similar. Look at the, the sharp. That's massive. I mean, that really is is a big run-up. And as far as it reacted, it's reacted to government stimulus to try and get themselves out of the doldrums. Um, bit of a false market creation, but markets react that way and anything can happen. So uh, that, that's a big run-up as well. So keep, again... Beware if you're trading that market. The South African market has made a new all-time high as well. Uh, it took some time, but you know, it, it, it really did massively outperform for some time. And we do have customers in the South African market, but they mostly trade the U.S. market. In fact, they all trade the U.S. market, our customers. But uh, for interest, look how it's moved from the upper uh, channel line to the to the bottom channel line here and is, uh, is made a... a I've just recently been there and it's the place is a buzz um, and the rain's getting stronger and uh, just seems to be pretty positive and I'm sure that is as a result of that. Right, on to commodities. Um, looking at the uh, the CRB um, commodity index, it's just sideways movements going on. This is a weekly chart, underperformance of stocks, so commodities underperforming stocks, that ratio. And if we now go to gold, Gold made that breakout, um, which we spoke about uh, at the time. All those touches, and eventually, when it did go through, you know, it was going to go, and it's and it's an uptrend, yeah, and just a new sideways movement. That's a continuation pattern, a rectangle, wide ranging rectangle. Test, come back, test, breakout, very strong. So this market, it doesn't look like there's any reason why it should stop anytime soon because gold has long term trends. That are strong, so it looks like it's going to go higher. Uh, silver hasn't believed it as much, but is starting to to believe now and look for the catch up uh, when when the, the gold bugs really when gold really does bite and trend. Uh, silver uh, kind of has a look to see what's happening, and if 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 the gold uh, trend doesn't continue, it falls away. Silver falls away very quickly, but when that gold trend becomes solid and strong. Silver tends to catch up, so that's where the the opportunity would be uh, to to and there's the new high just made a new higher high uh, to to have a really strong silver market to um, and you can trade that through the SLV ETF and you've got timing signals on that as you do GLD for the gold uh, gold market as well. On to uh, copper, copper uh, really had a sharp fall once it got to that new all-time high up there, tested a number of times back into the range, now testing the all-time high, previous all-time high again, which uh, which very, for a very short period of time became a support zone, then went back and became a resistance zone, bang, didn't get through, and now it's trying again. If it gets through, again, what we look for is a, is a test of that resistance zone at, as, as a support zone, and then to see where it goes from there. And copper, uh, you know, it's called uh, 
you know, duct a copper and, and a bellwether for small to medium resource ducts. Let's see what happens. Brent crude uh, downtrend uh, has bounced off the lower bottom uh, channel over here. There's a double bottom and heading higher. Looks like it's going to it's going to get above eighty dollars, but underperforming equity, so not strong at the moment. And just looking at uh, cryptos, strong long sideways moving market here, which has been going since March of twenty four. So we're looking at eighteen months. That's that's pretty long. If you go back and look historically. At, uh, at, at at crypto at Bitcoin, it's uh, a breakout is uh, is looming, and we don't know which way it's going to go. Uh, historically, the breakout's been to the upside when these long because this really is a long term rectangle, if you like, which is a continuation pattern, a continuation of the trend leading into the pattern, into the continuation pattern, and the longer this continuation pattern goes, you know, the stronger the breakout could be in either direction, uh, but the odds are it's going to be on the upside. So keep an eye out for that. And those of you that do trade crypto, it's really a whipsawing market at the moment, unless you're trying to pick the tops and the bottoms. The Ciroc's done it pretty well, but most of these would have been lost trades in the sideways moving market. So wait for that breakout. And uh, pretty s similar with Ethereum, although it's been weaker, it's not as a, 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 as a defined uh, continuation pattern here. In fact, there is no continuation pattern and it, it is in a downtrend at the moment and you, we could put a downtrending channel on here to just look for when the breakout could happen. On to uh, uranium. Uranium is tracking along on the bottom of the channel. I changed the, the, the well, I didn't, the price changed the uh, gradient of that channel and uh, I just fitted the trend lines on it. And it's right bumping along the bottom end of this uh, of the lower channel line here. Interesting to see. Really interesting to see if if this does bump from the lower channel to the upper channel and test the uh, the gradient uh, uh, again. But this is a well defined uh, channel that's been going since you could argue that's been going uh, since what's that July 2022. So about two years. Odds are it's going to rise. Uh, Iron ore, strong bounce of support here. That's, that, 90, that, that 90 to $95 uh, range has become a very strong support resistance zone and it has bounced off it. Let's see where it goes from there. And uh, thermal coal, uh, also forming a strong base here at a higher level than where previous bases have been and looking like it could, uh, it's, and this is a this this base it can either be a base and bounce off it if that does form a long term base, or it could be a continuation pattern of the of the of the direction of the trend coming into this uh, this rectangle. So a rectangle going sideways, continuation pattern would see a drop to the bottom, or it can be a base forming for a new breakout to the top. And that is why generic technical analysis is so difficult because it's very subjective and you only know the answer once everything's happened. Uh, but that's fine as long as you have very strict discipline and you and you and you give time to looking at these things and you have a very strict set of criteria for if you do take risk uh, that when you exit. Okay, that's what I have. Are there any questions? Okay, Daryl saying can I define risk on, risk off? Yeah, it's it's terminology that uh, <coughs> excuse me that the um, the industry uses. Um, I, I, I eventually I, I tried to stay away from it, but eventually got sucked into it and started using it. And why? Because the rest of the industry uses it. What it effectively means is that risk on it's time to be in the market. Uh, so low low market risk, if you like, uh, defined by a bunch of you know, really subjective criteria that will chop and change from time to time. But you'll see financial journalists using it, financial commentators, if you watch any on TV or listen to them on the radio or whatever, um, the or read articles on you know, some of the the, um, the 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 places where you'll see lots of articles like LiveWire, you'll see the terminology used there. Risk off is typically saying you know time to lighten in equities, stay away from equities to some degree or all together, and and go into other asset classes, and that's when portfolio managers would would rebalance. Uh, and go and you know, take money and put more into bonds, et cetera, et cetera, and just rebalance between asset classes. So, so risk on is meaning time to be in the market and risk off is, is time to be out of the market. Um, 
pretty loose terms, generic, uh, sorry, um, and, and subjective as to what they are and one person's risk on would be another person's risk off at the, at the fine line between, you know, defining which or the other. So that's what that, <coughs> that means, Daryl. Right. To summarize quickly, you know, the questions there, uh, this, this, is, uh, this, is, this is a rising market. It's a bull market. It's a primary bull market within a secular bull market. And in most markets, you've got uh, even a secondary bull market as well. So you've got them all lined up, not you know, raging, but certainly by the definitions of generic technical analysis, we have secondary, primary, and secular all lined up at the moment. And it's, it's a market that people should have exposure to with, with equities. Right, I'll finish it there. Um, uh, and I'll be back with another session in a month. But in a couple of weeks' time, we'll be doing a portfolio consideration session and we'll bring a little bit of training and psychology in, into that one. So thank you for your time and attendance. And as always, I wish you consistent, objective, and peaceful active investing.